for we are encouraged today just by your presence. But Lord, we know when you show up, everything is going to be all right. Bless right now, Lord, your appointed preacher. This is the time to preach your word. seconds. I just want to talk about the pleasures of pain. Uh, the pleasures of pain. It would appear that any time uh, someone uh, would, would, would even put the words pleasure and pain uh, in the same sentence uh, wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't remember the last time I had a toothache and enjoyed the pain uh, from the toothache. I ain't never twisted an ankle and walked around saying, this feels good, limping around on my sore ankle. But when we look at things from a spiritual God point, uh, we will find out that Sometimes God uses pain as a stepping stone, if I may, to get us higher off the ground. Uh, when, 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 when we need spiritual uplifting and we need to spread our wings like eagles, 
Uh, sometimes God uses pain as the source of our elevation uh, to get us to soar a little bit higher. It, 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 it keeps us rooted and grounded. Um, I, 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 I'm not here to tell you to, to, to bask in your pain, but I, I'm saying to, to relish what God uses the pain to do. Uh, when, when, when we let God have his way, we'll, we'll find out that, that sometimes the curveballs uh, that life throws us uh, are there to design us to bring us closer to Jesus Christ. And, and, and we sometimes ask God to remove the pain, but brother, sometimes the pain is necessary. Uh, sometimes it's there for a specific reason. Uh, we, we need to understand that that. That, that, that God is not peeking on us. Uh, but, but when you become mature, you will find out that, that, that these circumstances actually were good for me. It did me no harm. I remember Sister Jackie when I, when I got a little older and was able to understand why my daddy was so hard on me. And, and, and I went over there and I said, I said, Papa, thank you for being hard on us. I thank you for, for the whoopers now. Uh, I, I see what you was trying to do. I, I see how you, you kept us on the straight and narrow. I thank you for being as difficult as you was for us. Kept us out of jail. You kept us from running the streets all crazy. You kept us from disrespecting our parents and our elders. You, you, you kept us from understanding that that's we ain't supposed to be stealing. You kept us to, to, to watch our language around grown folks. You taught us lessons that, that made us better people. Because you was hard on us. You can see the state of our country now is because people ain't hard on the kids anymore. But that's another story for another time. But pain, it drove us. To look for the safety in God's arms. Uh, pain, it made us long for peace in the midst of a storm. Uh, pain made us look for shelter in the times of rain. It, it made us look for hiding places from my enemies. It, it made us start looking out for God's protection. Because we was in pain. It kept you on your knees. It kept you praying. It kept you searching for God's understanding. It, 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 it had you trying to call the name of Jesus. It was useful when we allow God to, to do what he wants to do. Walk with me through this text. Book of Chronicles is a laundry list of events that took place in time. It gives you geologies of families. Uh, it, it is a, 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 a epilogue of people. It's, it's an obituary of descendants. It lets you know who begot who and who begot who and how they came through family circumstances. And you look in the middle of this obituary, you find that the Bible has to pause and call out a specific person in the middle of this obituary. In the middle of a graveyard, you see that they talk about Jabez. And I don't know about you, but I would like to I would like to think that if they start talking about the people and they start talking about my family and they say my, my great granddad did this and my granddaddy did this and, and and come on down and when they get to Jerry Dixon, they have to pause for a second and say he was more honorable 
than his brothers and his sisters. I, I just want a, a, a little side, a little clause in the middle of it when they start talking about me. I, I want them to say, well, hold on before I tell you about Bridget Leah, Shannon Alexis, and, and the hurricane. I have to stop right here for a second and say something about the person here. We're not going to jump over Brother Javais. He says, hold on. But my brothers and sisters, when we get in trouble when we read and study this passage of scripture, is people think if I come ask God to enlarge my territory and bless me indeed, God is going to give me something. And I've come to let you know that is far from the case. Don't run out here praying this prayer and think God is going to hear and answer your prayer. There must be some things that takes place in order for you to get the blessings that your bands receive. You see, we think God owes us something. The only thing God owes you is what God said he's going to give to you. And if he didn't say he was going to give it to you, he don't owe you nothing. Because he's God and he's God all by himself. Look at here. First thing we notice is that it says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He was an honorable man. And if you want to learn how to get a prayer through, learn how to be an honorable man. Learn how to honor thy mother and thy father, yes. that your days might be long yes. upon the earth. Yes. Learn how to give honor to honor is due. Yes. Learn how to be set apart and different among the others. Yes. That you stand out in the middle of a crowd. Yes. That you can be in an entire chapter, but your name stands out in the middle of a crowd. That you're honorable amongst the people. When you find that you're more honorable, you do things that honor Christ. You, uh, you, you meditate on his word both day and night. Uh, you're like a tree planted by the waters uh, that your leaves don't wither. And everything you touch prospers. Because you are honorable. Don't think just because you sing something about the name of Jesus that you are more honorable than anybody else. There's folks singing in the choir that's going straight to hell. I ain't talking about nobody that's talking about what I'm talking about. Don't think because you were a, a deacon at the church, you are more honorable than somebody else. Uh, you just get to sit up front. But if you don't let your light shine, and you ain't elevating Jesus Christ, you're just making a noise. He was more honorable than his brothers. He, he, he didn't seek after a worldly gain. Yeah. He had the mindset that I would, I would seek ye first the, the kingdom of God yeah, yeah, yeah. and his righteousness. Yeah. And he knew then that God would add according to his plan. Mm -hmm. Here he is. <coughs> Mama, he, was, he was more honorable. <coughs> that already lets me know that, that, that God will hear his prayer because he was more honorable. He, he, he did right things. And I like to, I like to hang around people that, that know how to get a prayer through. Yeah. I, I, I like friends that, that know when to pray and how to pray. I, I want somebody that's in tune with God. I, I, I need somebody that has an attentive ear that knows when it's time to pray. He, he was more honorable. Uh, but but look at the at the passage. It's, it's, it's crazy how, how, how God manipulates these things. He was more honorable uh, than his mother, than his brothers, uh, 
but his mama named him Jabez because she bore him in pain. If you understand that the custom of, of the Jews is that you don't name the child until his eighth day. He, he has to be circumcised and, and you name the kid according to his destiny. Uh, you, 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 you speak life over that child by giving him a certain name. And his name was then attached to him uh, that he would live up to the name in which he had. But his mother, eight days after she bore him, still remembered the pain that was that she had to go through in order to bear this child. And gave him the, the name of, of pain that every time she spoke his name, she was reminded of the pain that he inflicted on her when he was born. And that's why you, you have to be careful about how you speak over your children. You, you, you don't want to call them a little idiot that, that ain't going to amount to nothing. You, you, you condemn the child before the child even has a chance. You, you, you want to speak blessings on your kids instead of curses. You, you want to bring life into them and not try to put them down. And has anyone ever told you you were not going to amount to anything? You were not going to do anything? You ain't going to graduate high school? You ain't good enough for this job? You, you can't get this or you can't get that. But the devil is a liar. You can't label what I am because I am a child of the king. You, you can't tell me what I'm going to become because as long as Jesus has control over me, you can't dictate what's going to happen in my life. So right after we find out he's more honorable, we find out that he was cursed from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But the Bible didn't say anything about him succumbing to his pain. Yeah. Succumbing to the name in which he was labeled. Yes. Because he had enough sense to know, I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but that's how come sometimes our circumstances get all jacked up because you don't know when it's time that you should just stop what you're doing and fall down on your knees and start praying. Yeah. I'm not going to let my circumstances tell me what I can become. Mm -hmm. he, he said that I, I, must, I must go ahead and pray to the Lord mm -hmm. uh, because my circumstances uh, look bleak in the middle of this graveyard that they're reading. Uh, if you want to truly get your blessings through, when you pray to God, you must do exactly like Jabez did. First thing, Lord, I need you to bless me. Uh, Lord, I, I, I'm standing in the need of prayer. Uh, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with my own issues uh, right now. And, 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 and with these circumstances, Lord, it's pressed upon me. I, I, I need you to help my situation, Lord. And I need you to bless me, Lord. But, I, but when I talk about my territory, Lord, I'm saying I, I need you to bless those around me as well. But, but Lord, I need you to start with me. Uh, but when you finish with me, Lord, then I want to start praying for those around me. Because uh, I need my circumstances to change. I need the environment to shift in this place. I need once I get blessed, somebody else start getting blessed. I want the fire to catch on somebody else, Lord, after you touch me. Isn't it funny how folks question the way the Lord blesses the wicked? Uh, we 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 frown when we when we drive back home and we done been to two or three services today. And our neighbor is outside washing his 2018 Cadillac Suburban. Yes. He ain't went to church. Right. Car bigger and shinier than mine is. And you, you, you wonder why God is blessing the wicked. But God doesn't bless people, he blessed prosperity because of based upon what people do. Yeah. So if you are a giver and yeah. you're trying to help somebody on the side of the street, God's going to bless you because you are a giver. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, 
But the folks like to, to get mad at God blessing the wicked. But then we also question when God blesses the pure at heart. Yeah. In other words, we don't want God to bless anybody but me. I don't want to see nobody blessed but me. We don't want the man not going to church to be blessed. And we sure don't want the man of God to be blessed. We, 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 we don't want nobody blessed uh, but me. He, he, he. We, 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 we see that I don't know. I don't know Jeffrey Johnson personally, but he don't look like his check spouts. He, he don't appear to me like he has difficulty when he goes to the store paying for something. He drives a couple nice cars and lives in a, in a nice house in a nice neighborhood. But there's somebody looking at him saying he don't deserve all of that. Even people in the churches say he don't deserve all of that. But you don't see nobody laboring in God's vineyard. You don't see somebody trying to preach the gospel to people. Or you don't see somebody who took a small church and made it into a great church. So how in the world would you put your nose down on somebody doing the work of God and wonder why God is blessing them? Uh -huh. His prayer said, Lord, when you finish blessing me, bless my environment. Bless those around me. I like that. Because I don't want to be the only one blessed. Bless my friends. Bless Rod and his wife. Bless Sister Rita. Bless Sister Johnson. I want you to bless everybody, Lord. I want you to enlarge my territory that everybody is blessed. God don't like a selfish prayer. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for my neighbor. I'm praying for the man down the street. He says, Lord, bless me. Bless my territory. Bless, bless all that is around me. Yeah. But whatever you do, Lord, keep your hands upon me. Yeah. Stay with me, Lord. I need you to lead me and to guide me. I, I, I can't do anything if your presence isn't with me. I need you from Monday to Sunday. I need you to be constantly providing for me. I need to be constantly in your will, Lord. I don't want you to leave me because my haters are around me. That's why I want you to continue to bless my surroundings because if the, if the person that's trying to be my hater tries to come in here, he's going to have to start at the back and get to all these people before he can even get to me. I need you to keep your hands upon me. Yes. You remember David had the option of how he was going to be punished. Mm -hmm. God said, I can let man deal with you mm -hmm. or I can deal with you. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want? He said, Lord, just keep me in your hands. Mm -hmm. I, I would rather just be in your hands mm -hmm. than in man's hands. Yeah. Because no matter, no matter how much I do wrong, when God still has his hands on me, I still have a fighting chance. Yes. I still can get through it. Yes. There's something about when you remain in his hands, it keeps me, it keeps me going. He said that if, I, if you keep your hand with me, I know that it won't bring me no harm so that I might not be in any more pain. Yeah. How does he close a prayer by bringing back the fact of his own circumstances? 